Good morning, Grace Community Church. Thanks for joining me again as we continue in these studies in the Psalms. Today is the 24th day of the month, and so we come to Psalms 116 to 120. And as you soon realize, Psalm 119 poses a particular challenge, and I suggest that you either read the other four Psalms, or maybe in another month, you just read Psalm 119. And today I wanted to do something a little unusual because I want to give you a flavor for Psalm 119, but it's more than we can chew. So I'm just going to take verses 137 to 160 and make that my focus. We'll ask our same questions of the text. Who is God revealed to be in the psalm? What titles or terms are used to describe him? And we see in verse 137 that he is righteous and his rules are right. That is, they are just, they are fair, they are true. And we see this idea again in 142, your law is true. 144, uh, your testimonies are righteous. 160, the sum of your word is truth. So God is a righteous God who speaks righteously, truthfully, and words that are just and words that are reliable. We see in 138 that God is faithful. We see in 140 that he's the God of promise. We see in 149, steadfast love, that familiar word, and that God is a God of justice. We see in 151, maybe one of the sweeter things in this psalm that appeals to me, it says, you are near, O Lord. There's a contrast there between those who draw near to do him harm in 150 and the God who draws near is near, the God who is with us in 151. And 156, we see great is your mercy. So much of God here on display. The second question is a little harder to answer. How is God acting in this psalm? Really, the question becomes more, who does the psalmist believe God to be? And that's the foundation for his prayer and request here in the Psalms. He believes God to be the one who gives understanding, leading to life. 144, give me understanding that I may live. He is the God who saves. 146, he's the God who hears. 149, and again, the God who gives life. According to your justice, give life. 154, give me life. 156, give me life. 159, uh, give me life according to your steadfast love. Now, he means life as it is meant to be lived. Life that is the richness of life that is ours in Christ. That's what he's calling for. That's what he's asking for here, that it would be so. He also sees God as the one who pleads his case and redeems in 154. Plead my cause and redeem me. Give me life according to your promise. And here's where I think we can really see Christ in the psalm because Hebrews 7.25 says, He is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God, this God who is near. Through him, Christ makes a way for us to draw near to God because he always lives to make intercession for them. Christ ever pleading his own righteousness before God on our behalf so that God would draw near and God would hear and God would give life. That's who the psalmist knows God to be. Well, who is the psalmist? He's a man zealous for God's glory. My zeal consumes me because my foes forget your words. We see that he believes God is worthy to, to be obeyed and it bothers him that others don't. Uh, 158, the same thing. I look at the faithless with disgust because they don't keep your commands. He is also a man who feels small at this time and despised. Uh, verse 141, he's in trouble and anguish. 143, there are people, as we, I said, drawing near to him to do him harm. 150, speaks of affliction. 153, persecutors and adversaries, 157. So the psalm is written in the context of trouble and opposition and hardship and pain. 
Well, how does who God is and who the psalmist is come together here? Well, as in all of Psalm 119, those two things meet in God's Word. The Word of God is the center of life here in Psalm 119 throughout the psalm and in this place in particular. And all these terms are synonyms for the Word of God. Rules, testimonies, words, precepts, law, commandment, statutes, promises, all are synonyms to express one heart's desire for the Word of God, which is His life. This book, this breath of God breathed out through Moses and the prophets in the Old Testament to give us this book, which is our life. All his hope, all his confidence is grounded in this book, the book that God has given so that we might live. Well, it's no surprise then the answer to the fifth question is, we will say like John Wesley, I want to know one thing, the way to heaven, how to land safe on that happy shore. God himself has condescended to teach the way. For this end, he came from heaven. He has written it down in a book. Give me that book at any price. Give me the book of God. I hope that's the heart's desire that you express to God today. You love his word like the psalmist loves it here. You delight in his word, this book of promise, this book of hope, this book of life. You say, oh God, give me this book that I may live. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this book. Your breath written down so that we might have life. You're a talking God who wants to be known and has graciously disclosed yourself in a book. We bless you for it. We praise you for it. And we will meditate on it, even as the psalmist says here in the night watches. We will make this book our focus, our meditation. We will search it. We will dig it. We will pursue you in the book that we might see you, we might know you, and we might draw near to you and have life to you. May it be so for each one watching today to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.